Kia ora koutou. This video is a hard one from the November 2021 Pure 3 paper and it's a request for Sefton. So there are two things that you need to be really confident about in this problem and the examiner's report noted that it was very badly done and it looks to me like most people didn't even get four marks out of six on this problem. But if you're on top of two things, which is improper integrals, so that's integrals where the limit, one of the limits is infinity, and inverse trig functions, then there's nothing too bad about this problem as long as you go slowly. So I'll talk about the improper integral part later on, um, but the first thing I want to look at is um, how we can work with the inverse of tan. So when we start out with trig functions and we have y equals tan x, we should be really confident with what the graph of that looks like and what the domain and range look like. So very roughly, we've done this, I don't know, a thousand times by now. Here's my tan graph. All right, it's got asymptotes. Um, the asymptotes are at pi on 2 and then again at 3 pi on 2 and so on. So this is x and this is y. So here y is equal to tan of x. And when we're working with trig functions, um, we've got no issues here with the domain and range, right? So the domain is all real numbers and the range is all real numbers. However, if we want to find the inverse of that function, as we often have to do, we need to put some limits on the domain. Now remember back to AS that the reason we're doing that is that we want to have the function be one-to-one. -one. Okay, so the bit we're going to work with is just that bit of the graph when we're doing the inverse. And if you're not remembering that, then email me and I'll quickly send you some, some easier functions to work with inverting the graph. So, um, in order to get a function when we take the inverse, we have to limit ourselves to just this bit of the graph here. Okay, so instead of saying that the domain for the bit we're going to invert is all real numbers, it's going to be the part from negative pi on 2 up to pi on 2. And the inverse of the function we get by saying, let's switch around our x and our y. And that gives me y is equal to tan inverse of x. So we're mapping backwards, right? So what that means when we get down here is that for tan inverse of x, my domain is going to be all real numbers, but my range is going to be y between negative pi on 2 and pi on 2. Right, remember that when we're drawing the graph of an inverse function, what we're doing is we are reflecting in the y equals x line. Okay, so the tan inverse graph looks like this, roughly like this, going through there. And instead of the asymptotes being vertical asymptotes, we're going to have horizontal asymptotes. So this one's at pi on 2, and this one is at negative pi on 2. So you can see that what's happening when we've got um, y equals tan inverse of x. As x is getting very big, then the limit of y is going to be pi on 2. Okay, And understanding that graph and this fact is the key to getting the whole way through this question. All right, so that, that's... Um, not what you need to do is the first step in this problem, but it's an important part of understanding. So if you're not feeling confident with um, the tan inverse function, let me know and I can show you where to go and revise it on Dr. Frost or with some other videos. So now let's go back to Sefton's question. Well, we're told to use a substitution for doing this question and it makes it very easy to do the integration part of this problem. So we'll start off by saying let u equal x to the power of a half. And then we do our usual things. So du by dx is equal to 1 half x to the negative 1 half, which is equal to 1 over 2 root x. So looking at the integral, you can see that we've got a root x here and we've got a dx here. I'm going to separate my variables straight away. I get du is equal to 1 over 2 root x dx. And I can see that what I want to be able to match up when I'm putting things back into the integral is just 1 over root x dx. So we're going to have 2 du is equal to 1 over root x dx. So that's good because when we look at this integral, we can see that now we've covered off this and this. The next couple of things we have to do are we have to fix up our limits and we have to replace the x plus 1 in terms of u. 
Okay, so u is equal to x to the power of a half. That means u squared is equal to x, and u squared plus 1 is equal to x plus 1. So that's the next thing that we're going to replace. Right, so we've got those two building blocks done. Now going back again to the integral, it's time to look at the limits of integration. Okay, so here are my x limits, and here are my u limits. u is equal to root x. So x, the top limit is infinity, but we can think of that as x heading towards infinity. So what is happening to the square root of x as x is heading towards infinity? Well, it's still going to be infinity for that top limit, right? And here we've got x is 3, so the u limit will be root 3. So we're going to switch our limits to be these two things. And now looking back, we've covered off everything and we're ready to substitute into that integral to get it in terms of u. Okay, so we started out with this. Right, you don't need to copy all, all of that again in the exam, but you could just call it all i. Right, and now my top limit is infinity, bottom limit is root 3, and I've got um, 1 over u squared plus 1 times 2 du. Now that's actually a very easy integral for an A-level problem, now that we've got it that far. Um, we're going to take the 2 outside, so we're going to have 2 times tan inverse of u, and we're going to evaluate that with u going to infinity for the top limit and with the root 3 at the bottom. Now, let's see what we get here. I'm going to write this all down thoroughly, um, but we're going to be using the graph from the next page. So it's 2 times the limit as u goes to infinity of tan inverse of u minus 2 times tan inverse of root 3. Now remember, tan inverse of root 3 is just the angle that is giving me root 3. So that should feel really easy at this stage of the year. Here's my special triangle. Um, so this here, the angle whose tan is root 3, is just going to be pi on 3. Okay, so that's for that part. Now let's think about what is happening as u gets very, very big, what angle is giving me a very big value? And it's going to be 2 times pi on 2. Right, so we get this is what we've got. I'm going to go now to the next page of the OneNote and show you that on the graph. Right, so here's my graph of the inverse tan function, and you can see that as u gets very, very big, we're getting closer and closer to that asymptote, which is pi on 2. Okay, so that's where that came from in there. So my final answer here is pi minus 2 thirds of pi, which is pi on 3. Okay, I hope that helped. Um, if you are in 13 MCA this year or in future years, if you're watching this next year, please let me know if you're still having trouble with anything in this video. I think it's really important if you're aiming for an A or an A star that you are completely confident with the inverse tan function, which is why we've done it heaps in class, and with revising those improper integrals from last year. Thanks for watching, and I'll do some more videos shortly.